tell me, you see this creature? You got any idea what exactly that is? Well, would you believe me if I told you it's a caterpillar? Well, you should, because it really is. However, it's not just a caterpillar. It's actually one of the most dangerous ones out there. And it's also not the only one. No, no, not by a long shot. Today, we're going to be looking at just some of the caterpillars that if you see them, you should immediately run and ask for help. Our first entry is the Buck Moth Caterpillar. The Buck Moth is attractive, with boldly patterned wings that are mainly black wings with a narrow white band running through the center of said wing. They are absolutely beautiful creatures, with the female's body being black, but the male have a red tip on their abdomen. The Buck Moth differs from other moths in that it usually takes flight during daylight hours. Moths can usually be seen in the fall months since they've emerged and begin looking for suitable mates and the appropriate egg-laying sites. Females will then lay a cluster of eggs on the preferred food source, which is live oaks. And when the eggs hatch, that's when the problems begin. You see, the Buck Moth caterpillars are very voracious eaters. When a few of them inhabit a tree, it's more than likely that they're going to leave their host tree looking ravaged to the point of no return. But that's not the reason why they're on this list. The reason why is because these spiny little caterpillars are one of the most venomous caterpillars in the entire world. They are covered with branched spines along the top and center of the back. The spines are attached to venom glands and can deliver a nasty sting. The sting itself may induce immediate pain, severe itching, swelling, and redness. When the spines come into contact with your skin, though, you're gonna feel a light stinging sensation that makes you think, Oh, hey, that, that ain't so bad. It's kinda nice, actually. Oh, but it's gonna quickly elevate to severe pain, coupled with numbness within half an hour. Oh, well, I, I, don't, I don't think I like that. Oh, well, that's too bad. Although the numbness begins to dissipate in about an hour, the other symptoms often last a week, so enjoy that one there, buddy. Our next entry is the Saddleback Caterpillar. A saddleback caterpillar, also called the Icaria stimulia, is rarely mistaken for any other caterpillar. It's very distinct, with its white ringed brown dot squarely in the center of its green back, which resembles a saddle, and its brown head and rear end, and also a pair of nasty looking fleshy horns. This one inch long devil is the larval form of a fuzzy dark brown moth. It's native to a large area of eastern United States where it feeds on a wide variety of host plant species. In the U.S., these caterpillars have been found from Massachusetts south to Florida and west to eastern Missouri and Texas. Outside of the U.S., though, they're also found in Mexico, Central America, and Colombia. Like many caterpillars, the saddleback is covered with fine hairs and prickly quills, which is its preferred way to deliver its venom. What makes it different from other caterpillars, however, is that their cocoons are also covered with these venomous hairs. The hollow quills are connected to poison glands beneath its skin, so if you do come into contact with it, the pain can be much worse than the sting of a bee. This caterpillar has a very potent venom that destroys blood cells. Even a small prick from this caterpillar's venomous spine can cause asthma, stomach ache, and bleeding. Contact with the hairs can also cause very painful rash, burning, itching, swelling, and blistering, along with the usual nausea. Our next entry is the White Cedar Moth Caterpillar. The caterpillar of the white cedar moth, with the scientific name of Leptocinaria reducta, is about 4 centimeters long and very hairy. They have a brown or black head and their body is mostly black with small brown or gray markings on them. They're often seen climbing the outside walls of the house, around the windows and doors, and over the brickwork as well. Usually if there's one on the wall, there's going to be many others as well, as they are insects that mostly live in groups. These caterpillars are very picky eaters, and they seem to prefer the leaves of the Cape Lilac tree, hence the reason for their other name, the Cape Lilac Caterpillar. At night, they head up to the Cape Lilac tree and feed hungrily on the leaves, and sometimes there are so many of them that they strip the leaves completely. In the morning, they head down the trunk of the tree and find crevices and corners around the house, in the shed, and even on the car to shelter as well. Then in the evening, they head back up to the tree. It's no wonder that they're considered as pests. These caterpillars are just ugly pests that will even get inside the house if they can. Once there, they're gonna build sticky webs under furniture, and when they die, they're gonna have one horrible smell. And once they get into your house, chances are you're going to get stung. Their hairy bristles are capable of including a severe case of ureticaria, or in layman's terms, hives. And trust me, you don't want to have a severe case of hives in any sort of situation. Our next entry is the Cinnabar Moth Caterpillar. Cinnabar Moth Caterpillars are striking little creatures that have distinctive black and orange hoops around their body. They hatch from late June and are easy to spot as they make no attempt to stay out of sight, relying instead on their foul taste to deter would-be predators. 
The staple diet of the cinnabar moth caterpillars is ragwort, a tall plant with green leaves and a yellow daisy-like flower. Ragwort is poisonous and the caterpillars absorb the toxins into their bodies as they eat, giving them the foul taste that serves as their defense against predation. Cinnabar moth caterpillars are voracious eaters and can strip a ragwort plant very quickly, not only eating the leaves but the flowers as well. They actually eat so much that they are actually used to clear fields of ragwort. The thing is, however beneficial they may be, they still pose a danger to humans that is simply too great to ignore. Although most humans will only have mild to moderate reactions to this caterpillar's sting, not all of us are as lucky. The sting of a cinnabar moth caterpillar can trigger asthma, hemorrhaging, and potentially a lethal kidney failure. It can also attack the cartilage in the bones, causing extreme joint inflammation which can have permanent effects. They are aposematic, meaning that their bright orange coloration is a warning that they are unsafe to eat. The only ones brave enough to eat the cinnabar moth caterpillar are other cinnabar moth caterpillars, which is probably the most hardcore case of cannibalism in the animal kingdom in my opinion. Our next entry is the Pine Processionary Caterpillar. As the name suggests, the Pine Processionary Caterpillar loves to hang out in pine trees as they exclusively feed on the needles. When all grown up, they're completely harmless moths, but in their larval stage it's an entirely different matter. Humans don't have a lot of contact with them during their early larval stage, and that's because they prefer to stay on top of pine trees, building nests where a colony of them can live together for warmth. It's when they get a bit older and stir-crazy that they come into contact with humans and pets to dire consequences, especially for the latter, which we will get into a little bit later. The good news is it's not really hard to identify these suckers. They're the only caterpillar here to form a long chain, touching nose to tail. This snake-like procession is a real giveaway as to their identity. The danger that they pose to humans and animals is a very simple defense mechanism designed to stop them from becoming a meal themselves. Each caterpillar is covered with tiny barbed hairs, and it's these which do us harm. They're constantly being dropped throughout its time as a caterpillar. As well as also being too tiny to see, they also cover the branches of the tree where the creatures have been feasting, and of course the nests are loaded with them. They're even in the air around a heavily infested tree as well. When humans come into contact with these hairs, they can cause reactions ranging from mild inflammation and irritation to severe anaphylactic shock. If the hairs come into contact with your skin, a rash soon forms which can be incredibly itchy, painful, and last for as much as three weeks. The worst problems occur if you make contact with the caterpillar directly and ingest the hairs, especially if you're a curious little dog. This hairy guy is responsible for causing necrosis in the tongues of dogs unlucky enough to go for a taste. If you don't know what necrosis is, well, the simple explanation is that your flesh starts to rot, even if you're still alive. Fortunately, there have been no cases of necrosis on humans caused by this caterpillar, probably because we're smart enough not to lick a hairy insect. Now it's time for the day's best pick. And today we're going to take a look at a caterpillar that has an eerie similarity to Donald Trump's hair. And much like the Donald's hair, you'll probably regret touching it. Find out what it is next with the Pus Caterpillar. The Pus Caterpillar, or the Woolly Slug, is the most poisonous caterpillar in the United States. Its poison is hidden in hollow spines among its hairs, which, as we've established earlier, bears a striking resemblance to Donald Trump's infamous comb-over. This hairy caterpillar is found in the southern states, ranging west through most of Texas and north to Maryland and Missouri. It feeds on shade trees such as elm, oak, and sycamore. According to Don Hall, an entomologist at the University of Florida, a puss caterpillar sting feels like a bee sting, only worse. The pain immediately and rapidly gets worse after being stung and can even make your bones hurt. Which to me just sounds like a whole bunch of ouch right there. Aside from the searing pain that can even make your bones hurt, which I still find unimaginable, people unlucky enough to get stung by this crawling toupee of pain can look forward to feeling much, much worse. Aside from the usual swelling, itching rash of red blotches and raised ridges, you'll also feel restlessness and anxiety. That is if you can get your mind off the pain in your bones. Bouts of nausea and vomiting may also happen, and depending on the severity of the sting, you can also develop fever, muscle cramps, again on top of the pain in your bones, swollen glands, and if you're really unlucky, you can go into shock. Before we move on, do me a favor. My analytics show that only about 15% of you watching are actually subscribed. Come on guys, what's up with that? Can you guys please hit the subscribe button? You guys watch my videos every day anyway, so you might as well subscribe and keep up to date with every video we put out. And now our last entry, the Lonamia Caterpillar. The most dangerous caterpillar in the world is the Assassin, or the Lonamia Obliqua, so dangerous that they're responsible for several fatalities every year. These caterpillars are found in the rainforests of southern Brazil and can be very hard to spot, even if you're looking for them, as they blend in beautifully with the bark of local trees. 
Usually found in groups, when static they will be in a circle with their heads pointing outwards, and when disturbed they will move in a line. They're covered in spear-like bristles full of powerful anticoagulant venom, and even just brushing against one can cause vomiting, internal bleeding, as well as also the rupturing of red blood cells. Touching more than one, which is quite common as they have the tendency to bunch together in groups, results in massive internal hemorrhaging, renal failure, and for the extremely unlucky ones, death. There is a plus side though, the chances of one of these deadly caterpillars living in your backyard are virtually none. They can only be found in the rainforest of southern Brazil, and let's hope it stays that way. Have you been stung by a caterpillar before? Tell us about the experience in the comment section down below. Want to watch more videos about dangerous animals? Click on any of the videos you see on your screen. As always, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Later, everybody!